My partner and I have bought three seller finance deals, two here in Phoenix and one, one in Las Vegas in the last 90 days. And people have been asking me, hey, how do you underwrite these seller finance deals? It's very different than underwriting a sub two deal because there are, there are way more moving pieces to the table, right? There's some things that are negotiable on, on a seller finance deal that are not negotiable on a subject two, like interest rates, the payments, the amortization schedule, all that stuff, right? So I recently got a deal sent to me here in, here in Phoenix, Arizona by another wholesaler. Let's just call him Tom. And Tom, send, Tom sends me a, a text message. He goes, hey, are you looking to buy a seller finance deal here in Tempe, Arizona? And I'm like, I'm always looking to buy a seller finance deal in Tempe or wherever, honestly, Arizona or Las Vegas. And I said, can you, can you send me the details of the deal? So in this video, I'll be underwriting this, uh, I'll, I'll be underwriting the seller finance deal that Tom sent me. But I, in this, I just want to preface this before I start this video that underwriting is a, is a, is a, is an art, right? Because you have, you underwrite deals based on the, what resources you have, right? So if the way I would underwrite a deal on my very first deal would be very different than I would be underwriting my, my, a same deal five years down the road, right? Because you have different resources, different kinds of money, how cheap you can get your money. Um, do you have a crew out here that can do things at a fraction of the cost instead of paying full retail when, when, when hiring a contractor? How quickly can you turn the house around? There's so many factors that, that goes into underwriting a seller finance deal that I do want to preface this that this is not the one and only way, right? It has to depend on what kind of cards you're playing with. So let's get into it. So the address of the house, I'm not giving you the address of the house. Let's just say one, two, three main street, all right? This is not the address of the house. I'm just letting you know, okay? The homeowner was asking for a purchase price of $283,500. That's how much the homeowner thought the house is worth. And he says, I want a down payment of $24,000. My pretty reasonable, pretty reasonable, right? That's only, if you do the math, I think that's like eight or 9%. And then the interest rate, you will not believe it in 2024, we're, <laughs> we're getting a 3% interest rate on this house, okay? And then well, we also have a balloon payment, right? Um, balloon is something you don't talk about on a sub, sub two deal as much as you would on a seller finance deal. Balloon is, okay, the homeowner goes, I'm gonna sell a finance this house, I'm gonna be your bank, but I, I want my money back in seven years, 10 years, 15 years, right? So typically you will schedule this payment for 30 years, but you might have a five year balloon, seven year balloon, and 10 year balloon. And just rule of thumb for everybody, Seven is a minimum that, that I, I recommend everybody to go because seven is a full market cycle, right? So balloon payment of seven years. I got blue, I got I have meaning whatever I owe on the home on, on the on the house in the next uh by year seven, I have to give the homeowner lump sum in cash, right? With it, and I, I and I can either do that through selling the house outright or under uh, or refinancing the house or just paying the paying whatever I owe out of my personal cash from other businesses, right? They're, 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 watch the videos on how to pay off your loans, pay, uh, pay off your private money lenders, okay? Um, and then amortization schedule. Usually, 99% <laughs> of the time on a conventional loan, you know, FHA, VA, conven uh, conventional loan, DSCR loans, you always have, uh, like 99% of the time, you will schedule, they will schedule the payment for 30 years. But in this case, it was so odd because it was 32 year amortization, right? Right. I mean, I bought seller finance deal, a 30 year amortization, 40 year amortization, and this one was 32 years. And I'll explain to you later why it was a 32 year amortization, okay? So $24,000 is how much, that's a down payment that goes towards the purchase price, right? So, I'm, 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 so I'll be taking a loan from the homeowner for $200, and 59,500, right? And how did I come up with a loan amount? You just minus the purchase price minus the, minus the down payment. So I'm taking a loan at 259,500 and I'll be at a 3% interest rate. And I'm scheduling, I'm scheduling the payment for 32 years, okay? And when you, schedule, and when you put this into, into the amortization calculator, I'm not gonna do it right now because that's not the whole point of this. Your payment, your payment all just on the mortgage comes out to be $1,052. And this is just the principal and interest. What, what, there, there are a couple of things that we're missing in, in this factor, in, in this equation. 
a mortgage is a principal interest and taxes and insurance, right? So we have to factor in taxes for this house. And because it's a condo in Arizona has the lowest uh, state uh, property tax, property taxes, the, pro the taxes on this house is only $83 a month. And for the insurance, because we have an umbrella policy, for us to add one more property to our ex existing umbrella policy, it's like literally fraction of the cost. So we're just gonna put, obviously we don't know the num full numbers yet because we haven't gotten the quote, but I'm assuming it's gonna be around 65 bucks. 65 bucks per month. All right, but because this is a condo, there's a HOA fee, right? And I can tell you right now, I don't like buying condos, but this is a 3% interest rate, that I, so I, I committed to buying it. The HOA on this house is $302. That's literally like the 30% of your mortgage payments. It, it's insane. Like my mortgage is 1,050 bucks, and my age was 302, right? I, what can you say about HOA? You know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of HOA, uh, but that's a conversation for another day. All right, so every single month, it, let's just do the math. Uh, let me do the math real quick. Let me bring my phone real quick. 1,052, sorry, 1,052 plus 83 plus 65 plus 302, comes out to be 1,502. Monthly payment. comes out to be $1,502. That's the monthly payment on the house. And yes, we're not factoring in private money, right? If, if, I, if I decide to bring out a lender on this deal, um, yes, I'll have payments, but I don't know if I'm be, I'll be using my own money or if I'll be using a private money lender, right? And this house, this condo, is a, three, uh, is a two bedroom, one bath, and it's, it's rented out to section eight at the moment for 1200 bucks. So this is a negative cash flow seller finance deal. But guys, mind you, the homeowner has not raised the rent uh, from the section eight in the last like five years. So this going rate, this condo going rate for rent is right now, as we stand, it's around 1900 bucks, right? And it's very reasonable. I live in a one bedroom, one bath apartment right now and I pay 2300 bucks, right? So. For, for me to charge 1900 bucks on a long-term rental is actually very reasonable, right? So my payment on this house is 1502, and my, uh, and, my and I could long-term rental this out for 1900. So right off the bat, we're at 400 bucks a month in gross cash flow. Like I said, that we're not factoring in if we're borrowing the money to get into the, into the down payment. And because my partner and I do midterm rentals, we're able to make more money uh, by furnishing the house and renting it out to nurses, insurance clients for probably 2,400 bucks. Right, so midterm rental, 2,400 bucks. So my, if my payment is 1,502 and my, my midterm rental could be 20, uh, 2,400, this is a 900 bucks on gross cash flow. And guys, I've done the math. We have, we have properties all over the valley and we have the data to, pro to show that 2,400 is, is how much we can rent it out for. And, but, but the caveat is we have to furnish this house. We have to furnish this house. We're going to probably spend around seven, no, not 7,000, probably around 4,500, 4,500 bucks, uh, because this is a 902 square feet condo, right? It's small two bedroom, one bath condo. Uh, we're going to spend about, about 4,500 bucks to make additional 500 bucks in cash flow. So that is a pretty good deal. You may out. Uh, just in one year, I'll make the money that I spend on furnishing, I'll make that back in a year, right? Okay, so this is the this is the monthly payment, the cash flow breakdown. But let's let's break down the let's break down the entry fee, right? Hey guys, real quick, I am going live every single week in my school community to help answer everybody's questions because number one, I can't get to every single one of them in a timely manner. So click the link down in the description box below and I will personally help answer your questions. So there's entry fee. Twenty-four thousand dollars down. Right, 24,000. And this wholesaler, Tom specifically, he asked for $7,000 signing fee, which is, which is very reasonable. Assignment. Uh, down payment. And almost always, I, the buyer pays for all the closing costs. So I'm just gonna say 1%, so we're gonna put $3,000 in closing costs, and then 
I looked at the photos of the house and it's actually a really good house. So I don't think there's not much renovation that I'll do to the house. I'll probably do some deep carpet cleaning and really get just get a de uh, just get a cleaner out there. So it's gonna I'm just gonna say twenty five hundred bucks. And please don't come at me with a twenty five hundred dollar renovation. I know my pricing. You have different pricing. I'm in a different market. I have multiple clients, so I get client, I get pricing at a different 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 price, right? If you buy a hundred of the same item, you're gonna get those at discount. It's the same thing for me. If I have all these, if I'm if I'm hiring contractors every single time, and I buy a lot, and I and I buy one house a month, my renovation cost actually goes down because they give me special price and know that I'll come back to them every single month. Okay, and then and then holding cost will be. I'm just gonna say one month because we're not holding we're not holding the house for more than I mean we can furnish the house in about two weeks I mean probably even less than that probably in a week and then we can all and then because the renovation is so light I'm just gonna put one month of holding costs all right one month of holding costs which is 1502 and obviously there's cost to market this property right like we have to put it on a certain uh, platform so I'm just gonna say 350 bucks right so there is so there is the, there's the entry fee breakdown right so let's just add this all up. 24,000 plus 7,000 dollars in assignment fee, plus 3,000 dollars in closing costs, 2,500 dollars in renovation, 1502 in holding cost, and then 30, 350, 350 bucks in marketing. So we're at 38,000. We're just going for 38,000. So for me to get this house up and running, it's going to cost me around 38,000. And this is including every little item. And this is in, if it goes planned. So let's just say, let's just say, put a let's just put a budget for forty thousand dollars. Forty thousand dollars. So forty thousand dollars is a, and, and I'm buying the house for two hundred eighty-three thousand. So I'll say that's a what is that number? Like thirteen percent down payment? I don't know the number. Actually, let me do the. Now that I have a calculator, let me just show it to you. Um, forty thousand dollars is uh, how much? Of the down payment. This is fourteen percent down payment. Fourteen percent down payment. It's a little higher than what I usually like to stay at, right? I just try to stay everything everything combined on the entry fee. I try to stay around ten percent. So it should be around twenty eight twenty eight thousand to thirty thousand dollars down payment. But I'm spending forty thousand dollars. So I'm spending ten thousand dollars more than I would usually that I would spend on this deal, right? And this is the most interesting thing about underwriting a seller finance deal versus underwriting a sub two deal, is and nobody factors this in. Nobody talks about it, and I'm the I'm I think I'm one of the few people that actually understands why seller finance is so much more beneficial. Is yes, you can you can yes you can all this is you know negotiable. You you can say hey seller give me zero percent, but also you can get six percent, you can get seven percent. You might you might ask the homeowner hey amortize can you amortize it over forty years instead of thirty two years. Can you, can you ask for 10 year balloon? All this is negotiable, which is the best part about seller finance. But this is the best part about seller finance deal, is that when I looked up this homeowner, the, the homeowner that's, that owns the house as of today, you, this unit, oh, this is the craziest part. When I, look up, when I looked up this homeowner on PropStream, and by the way, PropStream, by far the best software that I could ever use uh, when it comes to finding deals, done over 150 deals just using PropStream. This homeowner, so this the, so this particular unit is uh, 101. It's like 123 Main Street, unit 101. This homeowner owns 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, oops, 110, and 111. I'm not even joking you. This homeowner owns like 12 units just in this complex alone. And this and Tom already did three seller finance deals from this exact same seller, same exact terms, right? And it might not be a good deal right now because I'm putting in fourteen percent down payment versus a <coughs> versus a ten percent that I'm comfortable with. But guess what? I have a shot at buying all these units on seller finance, and I don't have to ever ever spend any more money on finding another seller finance deal, right? Just on, the, just on this unit specifically, I might have spent, let's just say, you know, Tom might have spent 3,500 bucks to find this lead, right? Having a quote caller, you know, having a team, running a team, 
it might have cost Tom thirty five hundred bucks to find this homeowner, but it but look at all the opportunities that are available, right? You look like for me myself, I've worked, I've done sub two deals for the last twenty four months, and I've done over hundred and fifty sub two deals in my career, and never have I ever gotten two, another sub sub two deal from the same exact homeowner after I bought their first one, right? So I'll buy a house sub two from, let's just say her name is Mary. Mary sells me in her first house. Guess how many times I bought a second house from people like Mary? Never, right? I'm, I'm looking at this deal and I'm, and I'm saying, I'm willing to overpay for this price because I have a shot at buying every single property. And, and this and this is an even better part. Tom, will make $7,000 signing fee on every single one of these deals if I buy them. So this is, for Tom, this is not a $7,000 deal. This, this, this is a relationship game, right? One, two, three, four, five, eleven. So Tom has, Tom's gonna make $77,000 just, just on this relationship alone. And that's what most people don't talk about. So on this deal, this deal is a good deal for me. And I already committed to buying it because of the opportunities that I have. And is there a guarantee that this homeowner will sell me his, his entire portfolio? The answer is no, there's no guarantee. But how would you ever know if you never even tried, right? So I'm like, let's just try on the first house. It might not be the best best deal, but if I can perform time and time and time and over again, that I, I can make the payments and that I'm keeping up with the house payment uh, and, and, and the condition and the house condition is, is getting better, is maintained. This is an opportunity of a lifetime. And this is one seller, guys. This is one seller. And ima imagine, like, just for, just for you to be in the top 1% of the population, you, I think you need to own eight houses or something. There, there you have it. And let's just, say, let's just say you find one person like this every month. So let's just say you have 12 people that are selling you all their portfolio on seller finance over the next you know, 24, 36 months, and you have just 12 people that you're working with. And let's just say on average, they have 10 houses, 120 houses with just 10 relationships. Some of some, I mean, this particular homeowner, he has 19 other houses. My previous homeowner that I bought a sound finance from, Tom Hoverson, he's got, uh, he's got 17, right? So this is a relationship game. And this is why I'm pivoting my, um, this is why I'm pivoting my strategy to more seller finance because I know that I don't necessarily want to work with 90 different sellers on 90 different houses and only buy that house, right? And guys, if you got any value out of it, I have started my own free school community and I go live every Wednesday uh, for about 90 minutes to answer everybody else's question because I have people asking me questions about, about real estate, gator lending all the time. And I just don't have, I just don't have time to answer every single one of them in the individualized, but what I still, which is reason why I created the school community. It's completely free, 90 minutes of free Zoom call just to ask me questions. Um, join the link, it's, uh, the link will be down in the description box below and you get to network with people that are doing deals. So uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and actually, let, let, let me show you my setup. Look how ghetto my setup is. Look, iron board. Iron, uh, the, 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 what, what are, whatever this thing is called. I got iron board. I got pants, two books, Kleenex, and then, and then, uh, and then, and then my computer. And then I got two lights, like just like this, and, and a wiper. So, guys, it may not be the best setup, but at least I try my best. So, um, I will see you guys in the next video. Join the school community.